In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It was like music, hovering and floating there, with the sound of lutes and timbrels in the night air. It was like waves beating upon the shore, insistent with a rhythm, a pulsing, unfelt before. It was like wind blowing from off the seas of other, far other lands than these. It was like wings, like whirring wings that fly, the song of an army of swans on the dark sky. It was like God, a presence of blinding light, ravishing body and soul in the spring night. Music, waves, wings, winds, God. Quaker poet Clive Sansom, whose poem I've just read and which I hope you were given as you arrived in church this morning, this poem comes from his 1956 collection, The Witnesses, and he tells the life of Jesus in the words of those who knew him. Here, his mother Mary. If you don't know the collection, I really recommend you looking it up. It's full of the most beautiful poetry. Music, waves, wings, winds, God. In this poem, the images lead us, the four of them, step by step to God, like stepping stones crossing a river, tripping lightly in this beautifully constructed poem from one side to the other. The brevity of the poem adds to its perfection. Utterly simple and utterly profound. The Annunciation described in the simplest possible language with the ultimate mention of God, the only religious language used. People often ask me how to pray or tell me that prayer is difficult. I'm very fortunate because I was taught to pray as soon as I was taught to speak, perhaps before. It was my gran that taught me. An Irish Catholic, she only had two types of prayer, going to mass and praying the rosary. And since she prayed the rosary through most of the mass, perhaps really the rosary was her only way of praying. It's easy to be dismissive of such simple prayer the lifelong repetition of the prayers of the Rosary, the Creed, the Lord's Prayer, the Hail Mary, the little doxology. At home in the subdeanery, I have thousands of books on prayer, on spiritualities, Benedictine, Carmelite, Ignatian, and many more. But I really doubt that they have brought me any closer to God or any greater wisdom or faithfulness than my grand had. I was delighted to see on your pew sheet that the rosary is prayed publicly here at Bourne Street once a week during Our Lady's month of May, 11 o'clock on Saturdays. If this is something you haven't done before, I really encourage you to come along to join in and try it out. The rosary works on many levels, and each of the levels contributes to its richness. It is physical, scriptural, doctrinal, sentimental, and Christ-centered. Physical. Occasionally, praying the rosary with a group, I've had to lend my beads to someone else who doesn't have them with them. It's terrible praying the rosary without the physical touch of the beads, the movement of them through the fingers. When our brains associate objects and movements with particular emotional states, it can help to trigger those states. Just touching my rosary beads in my pocket can help me feel steadier in moments of stress. It brings me back to the heart of who I am as a person. I can't imagine going into a difficult meeting or starting a hard conversation without my beads in my pocket. 
The rosary also works physically through the repetition of the prayers. I really recommend praying the prayers out loud when you can, even if you're on your own. We know that the movement of the lips and the sound produced by the voice has a stronger effect than simply thinking the words in our heads. It's why we speak words out loud when we want to learn them off by heart. The rosary is scriptural. It is a series of meditations on scriptural text mysteries. It's quite good if you're just starting to pray the rosary to have a book in front of you with those texts to meditate on and other times to speak those texts out loud as part of praying each mystery. The rosary is doctrinal. The rosary is a great vehicle for orthodox doctrine. We repeat the words of the Apostles' Creed at the start of every rosary. The mysteries themselves teach us the fundamentals of the Christian faith. It would be impossible to pray the rosary regularly and not to be clear about what it is to believe as Christians. Because the rosary is scriptural and doctrinal, it protects us from straying beyond orthodox teaching. As St. Louis de Montfort wrote, never will anyone who says his rosary every day be led astray. This, he continues, is a statement that I would gladly sign with my blood. The rosary is sentimental. Clive Sansom's poem that we've just heard captures for me something that is so important for those of us who are Anglo-Catholics to recover. A proper place for sentiment in our lives. It was like God, Sansom writes, a presence of blinding light, ravishing body and soul in the spring night. To be ravished, to be embraced by something other, to be held in the arms of one who is not us. To be properly sentimental is to bring our Christian faith down from our heads, deep into our hearts. In our modern Western world, we tend to function as if our existence is in our brains. There are even science fiction stories about preserving brains or downloading personalities from a brain. But this is deeply unchristian. We are really highly embodied beings. We exist in the totality of our physical existence, which is why the doctrine of the resurrection of the body is so important. For the Eastern Orthodox tradition, the uniting of mind and heart, the descent of the mind into the heart, is the very aim of the spiritual life. And in the West, Augustine and Benedict talk of expanding the heart. The praying of the rosary involves little intellectual effort, but it requires the assent of faith. And more than that, it needs us to root ourselves in our bodies and in our hearts. Finally, the rosary is Christ-centered. As St. John Paul II said in his marvelous apostolic letter, Rosarium Virginis Mariae, in the rosary, we remember Christ with Mary. We learn Christ from Mary. We are conformed to Christ with Mary. We pray to Christ with Mary. And we proclaim Christ with Mary. I learnt the rosary with my gran, but it was with my mum that I discovered how vital, how life-giving this prayer can be in the face of death. Mum died just over two years ago, having spent the last six weeks of her life in a hospice. Throughout those six weeks, I was able to pray with her almost daily, occasionally celebrating Mass at her bedside, but mostly praying the rosary. In my memory, I now measure those six weeks, that ebbing away of her life, 
by her praying of the rosary, initially able to answer the prayers with me, each of us praying half of the Our Father or the Hail Mary. Soon she joined, just joined in with me as I said the prayers. Eventually she could only move her lips. And in her last hours, she could barely move her hand to cross herself, and her lips moved just for the Amen. As the end came, even that faded. She slipped away soon after I had prayed the prayer, go forth from this world, Christian soul. It was as beautiful a death as any of us could wish for. My brother and sister and I praying by her bedside. Neither my mum nor my gran ever thought prayer was hard or difficult. They never expected any mystical experiences or the dark night of the soul. Probably neither of them had ever read a book about prayer. Certainly they never went on retreat or on a quiet day. But they proved to me, as St. Francis de Sales wrote, that the rosary is the greatest method of prayer. What I learned from them is that the rosary is truly contemplative, not a technique for prayer, a forcing of contemplation, but as an opening up to that contemplation that is only ever a gift from God, resting in the divine presence without seeking or expectation. It was like music, hovering and floating there, with the sound of lutes and timbrels in the night air. It was like waves beating upon the shore, insistent with a rhythm a pulsing unfelt before. It was like wind blowing from off the seas of other far off lands than these. It was like wings, like whirring wings that fly the song of an army of swans on the dark sky. It was like God, a presence of blinding light, ravishing body and soul in the spring night. Archbishop Fulton Sheen wrote of the rosary that it is the book of the blind where souls see and there enact the greatest drama of love the world has ever known. It is the book of the simple, which initiates them into mysteries and knowledge more satisfying than the education of any. It is the book of the aged, whose eyes close upon the shadow of this world and open on the substance of the next. The power of the rosary is beyond description. Amen. Amen.